Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be talking about automating dev workflows and increasing productivity with Docker Hub. I am your host, Peter McKee. I'm a senior manager on the developer relations team at Docker. You can follow me on Twitter at P McKee. Docker's mission statement is to help developers bring their apps to life by conquering the complexity of app development. Docker's really taken a focus back on the developer and the developer teams and helping them to build world-class applications and moving those into the cloud as quickly and painlessly as possible. I'm excited to be part of the team and excited to show you some really cool features we have today in Docker Hub. A little bit about Docker Hub. We have over 130 billion pools from Hub, over 5 million users. And then we have this great product called Docker Desktop. It's the number one easiest way to get Docker installed on your laptop and also Kubernetes. Super simple. Go check it out. Uh, OK, so what we're going to talk about today, we're going to start off talking about access tokens, how to set them up and create them and how to use them. Uh, then we'll dive into Slack integration. Slack is super important in today's environment, especially what is going on now in the world. A lot of us are working remote. We have distributed teams. And getting asynchronous messages to what's happening into your build process is vital. And then we're going to move on to automating builds. Remote. Docker is super easy to build. Once you push into a code repository, you can hook up Hub to connect into your repository and build your images automatically. And then I'm going to show you how you can run your tests. Once your build is, uh, image is created, you can run your tests against it. And if those pass, you can push your image into the repo. If they fail, you'll get a message. And then we'll dive into some advanced options around auto builds and auto tests and how you can plug into that pipeline and really customize the way you do your builds and your testing. And then finally, we'll take a look at webhooks. Web webhooks are a great way to tie into other CI CD processes and really build out advanced workflows. We're going to be doing a lot of demoing today, so not a whole lot of slides for you developers out there. So don't worry, we won't be staying in PowerPoint slides. We're going to dive right into the product and I'm going to show you all the cool features. Let's take a look at access tokens first. So I'm going to navigate over to Docker Hub. And I'm going to sign in. Now, if you don't have a Docker ID, you can click on sign up. You can enter a Docker ID email and password here. I already have one, so I'm going to sign in. Once we're logged in here, you're going to navigate to the top menu underneath the right beside your profile. You're going to drop down this menu. You want to choose account settings. Then you can come over here to the left at security tab, click on that, and then you can see right here you have access tokens. So let's create a new access token need to give it a name or a description. I'm going to call it Peter McKee, P. McKee. Let's create that. Now here on this modal, you got to make sure that you copy it because this uh, token won't be sent, shown to you uh, again. And you can see that with this big warning sign here. So let me click on the, the copy and then the copy and close. I like to copy both times just to make sure I have it. So now we're going to go up, come back over here to a text editor. Let me paste that in there. Let me make sure I save that. I'm going to save it into this folder called Access Tokens. And I'm going to give it a name, P. McKee, again. Click Save. Now I'm going to come over to my terminal. I'm going to log out of Docker. OK, so I'm not logged in. Now, normally, the way you'd log in is you just do a Docker login. Enter your username. And then you give a password. And you're logged in. OK. But I want to use that access token to log in. So let me log back out. And what I'm going to do to use that access token, I'm, I'm going to cat that access token. So it's right here. I'm in that same folder. Remember, I saved it in my access tokens folder. And so I'm going to cat that. If I just hit that, there we go. It's catting, right? So I'm going to pipe that into Docker login. And I'm going to tell it my username. I'm going to tell it the password. But I'm going to say use the standard in for my password. Let me hit enter. There we go. Logged in. So now if we come back over to Hub, let me refresh the screen. 
you can see last used, and there we go, we have a date. Now, what's really cool about access tokens is you can activate these, deactivate these. You can have multiple access tokens, so you can use them in different places. Um, you can use them in your CI CD pipelines or wherever you want to. So I'm going to click on edit here. I'm going to deactivate or inactivate this access token. Let's click save. Okay, so now it's inactivated. Let's come over here to the terminal. Let's log out. Okay, so I'm logged out. Now I'm going to try and log back in using that access token. Again, I'm going to cat that file, the pmckee file that holds that access token. I'm going to pipe that into Docker login. I'm going to give it my username, pmckee. I'm going to pass the password in using that dash dash password dash standard in. All right, let's give it a shot. There we go. Just as we expected, we should not be able to log in with that access token anymore because we made it inactive. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's refresh. Still inactive. I'm going to activate that. Click save. Okay, now it's reactivated. And as we come back over here, try logging again. Awesome. Okay, the next cool feature we want to talk about is Slack integration. So I'm going to come back over here to Hub. And you'll see over here to the left, notifications. So I'm going to click on notifications. And you see we have two types of notifications. We have email and Slack. Email right now I've turned off, but you can set it to only failures or to everything. I'm going to leave it off so I don't get a bunch of emails. So down here under Slack, I'm going to click the plug. That's going to navigate over to Slack. And I'm going to choose a channel to where I want to send it all my notifications to. I'm going to choose Project Zion and click Allow. That's going to wire everything back up and take me back in the hub. And now you see Slack is connected. Right, so I have the team, coding adventures, the channel, Project Zion, and right now I'm going to send everything, but also you can do the same thing as email. You can only send failures if you want, or you can turn it off. But let's send everything because we want to be able to see all of our messages. Okay, now let's set up a auto build in Hub. So I have a little application uh, written in Node.js that's hosted up here on GitHub. So let's go to GitHub, and I'll go into the organization. And then here we go, it's Docker, hello world. Very basic application, Node.js application. If you don't know Node or JavaScript, no big deal. It's uh, not really necessary for what we're gonna do here. All the concepts are the, exactly the same. Okay, so got a little application, it's hosted on GitHub. I've already cloned it to my local machine, so let me go into that directory, um, hello world. Uh, let's pull it up in the code editor. Let me walk you through some of the code here. So again, basic application. We have a server, it's listening, listening on a port. Um, and then we have some routes, it's listening to every route and it's just gonna jump back, dump back some HTML. We also have uh, a little utility function that has a unit test. And we're gonna get to how you test these in a minute. But that's the very basics of it. We also have our Docker file here. And so uh, basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna build this image from Node. Um, we're going to set up a, a build argument, then an environment variable. We set our working directory, another build argument for the port, and then we pump that into the environment environment variable port. Uh, we copy over our package JSON, copy over our package lock. Uh, we run npm, then we copy in our code, and then we start up the server. Very very basic Docker file. If you don't understand these commands in this Docker file. Um, you can go to docs.docker.com and find them all there. Okay, so let's let's start out. Let's go ahead and build the image. Um, first thing I actually I want to do is let's go ahead and create the repo up here on Hub. So I'm going to come into Organizations. I'm going to click on my Ronin.js organization and into our repos here. This is where all of your repos will be listed for your organization. You can also find your repos by coming to the repos tab, drop, clicking the drop down. I could see all my personal repos, or you can come in here to organization. And again, from this view, we can see we don't have any uh, repos yet. So let's go ahead and create one. So I'm gonna click on there. Again, wanna make sure I'm in the organization. I'm gonna name it. I'm gonna name it the same as my GitHub application okay I'm gonna leave it public for now 
and then I'm going to connect GitHub. So I'm click on uh, connected to GitHub. I'm going to choose Ronin.js, and then I'm going to choose Docker Hello World. Cool. We're not going to set, set up any build rules for right now. We're just going to leave it uh, the way it is. So let's hit create. Let that create. All right, cool. So let's jump back over the command line. Let's build the image local. So I'm going to do a Docker build. I'm going to give it a tag. I'm going to call it Ronin JS and Docker Hello World. I'm going to give it the latest tag. Actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it the context, local context of the working directory in because that's where my Docker file is located. Located. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so we built successfully. And you'll see right down here that it was tagged with latest. Okay. So let's come back in the hub. You can see our repo is here. If we come to the tags, we can see we don't have any images pushed yet. So let's go ahead and grab this command here. This is the, the Docker push command. And I'm going to skip the tag name there. Let's come back to the command line. And I'm going to push the latest. Should be done here in a second. OK. All right, so let's come back into Hub. Now, let's take a look at the tags. And there we go. There's our image. It's tagged as latest. It was pushed up by me. Um, it has 346 megabytes. OK, cool. So now that's the manual way to build an image. On your command line, you run your Docker file, you build an image, and then you push it up into Hub. So what we want to do is kind of automate that. And we want to tie in kind of our development workflow. It's a pain if everybody, every developer on your team is building images by themselves and they're pushing them. Tagging can get out of get out of whack. What branch you can accidentally um, build from the wrong branch, all kinds of things. So what we want to do is set up an automated build. So let's go over here to the builds tab. Okay. And you can see now that we don't have any activity. Nothing's been built yet. So let's come over here and configure our auto build. And you'll see the repository is Ronin.js. The project is Docker Hello World. Um, now we have some options to do here for auto test. I'm going to come back and talk about these in a minute. And same with the repository links. But right now I wanted to show you, you're given when you first set up and configure auto builds, you're given one build rule. And that's looking at the branch. What branch it's going to look for is the master branch. It's going to build your image based on that. And it's going to tag it with the latest tag. Your Docker file is called Docker file. And now you can set the build context. And since our Docker file is right in the root of our source, we just need to give it a forward slash. You can also turn auto builds on. You can turn them off. So this build rule, if this build rule matched and the auto build was turned off, it won't build. So we definitely want to have that on. And then you can turn build caching on and off. We're going to leave it on for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. So that's saved. So let's come back to our source code. And I'm going to open this back up into our editor. And I'm just going to make a simple change to our route. And instead of just hello comma, we're going to do hello from. Let me save that. Come back to our command line. You can see that you can see that we have a change, right? So let's commit this change. So get commit. Okay, so it's committed. So now let's push this up into Git. And since we connected Hub into Git, it's going to watch. Uh, Based on our build rules, if they are matched, it's going to build the image. So let's do a get push. OK, we just pushed it up to Hub. So let's come back over in Hub. I'm going to refresh the screen. And there we go. We can see that a build is in process. It's pending right now. And as that's building, when I talk a little bit about this interface, you can see 
what your uh, build rules are right here. And then you'll also get a list um, of your recent builds and what happened to those builds. If they failed, they passed, or they are canceled. You can also look at the timelines, and this will give you a good indication of what's been built, what hasn't been built. Okay, let's go check on our build. Okay, looks like it's finished. Let's go in and we can see our build logs. So here's exactly what gets put out on the console. You can see it right here, build logs. You can also see your Docker file and the readme, which our readme is pretty sad right now. But anyways, okay, so back on the build logs. Uh, you can read right down through this. You can see all the steps that happened that we did locally. We just now did it up in the cloud through Docker Hub. And we come down to the bottom. And you can see the image was successfully tagged with the latest. So let's go, go look at our tags. And there we go. The latest is now updated. Okay, let's go add another build rule. I'm going to hit configure builds. And right here on build rules, I'm gonna hit the plus sign. Let's build one with based on a tag. So I'm gonna hit tag. Now in the source field here, you can also put regular expressions. So if you wanna uh, match on tags, on branches, uh, based on a format of how you tag at your, at your um, company. So I'm gonna put in a regular expression that will catch v1.0.0 .0 or sem versions. Uh, and then I'm going to tag it with WAC1 curly brackets. And so with the, when you use regular expressions, you can also tag based on the captures of those regular expressions, up to nine of them. So we're, I'm just going to capture the first one here. Again, Docker file is the same, and it's in the same location in the root. We're going to leave the, the auto build on and build caching on. So let me go ahead and save that. Give that a second to save. Okay, cool. So let's come over to our console and let's tag uh, our repo. So I'm going to do a get tag. I'm going to annotate it. I'm going to say 1.0.0. I'm going to give it a message. This is the greatest release ever. Okay, cool. So now let's push those up to the server. So we're going to do uh, get push origin v.1.0.0 all right so that's pushed up so let's go back to hub let's take a look at what's happening in hub here so we scroll down to the bottom great so now we can say we can see our build rules been triggered and it's pending and then we can see right here that it's in pending state looks like it's finished let's go in there all right and again, we can see our build logs. Let's go down to the bottom. And there we go. We've tagged it with 1.0.0. So let's go take a look at our tags. And there it is, 1.0.0. Let's set up some tests to auto run. Okay, so let's come into our code. And again, we have a little, um, little utility function here. It doesn't do much, but uh, it'll work for our testing purposes. So I have a little test that's going to add uh, call the utility function, send in the number one and number two. Those should be added together and they should equal three. So let's go ahead and run those tests on the on the command line here. And so we'll just do npm test. Okay, cool. So one test ran, one passed. All that happened there for those of you that don't know uh, npm or node in the package json we have set up some scripts uh, we have a test script so when i do npm run it'll look in this scripts uh, json and find test and then run the command jest so it's the exact equivalent of just running jest on the command line uh, except for we ran it through npm okay so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and set up uh, auto test and to do that we need to set up we need a docker dash compose test file and then we also need a docker file um, that we can use to build the image that we're going to test inside of so I have that on a branch already so let me just merge that in
Okay. And now let me close this down. So now we have a Docker Compose file dot test dot yaml. And what this is going to do, it's going to set up one service. The name of the service is SUT or SUT, uh, and that means system under test. Um, this, the name of the service has to be SUT for Docker Hub to pick that up to be able to run your tests. And then we give it some normal Docker Compose commands here. Uh, underneath the build, we set the context, and then we tell it what Docker file to use to build the image. Right? So let's go look at that Docker file real quick. And so you can see, let me let me pull up the. So here's the image that we here's the Docker file that we've been using to build the images before. Right. And here's the test one. And so this is going to set up the big differences here is we set the node environment variable to test. All right. And then we run npm install instead of npm ci. npm ci will leave a lot of uh, packages that you don't really need to run in production. Um, when you run the npm install, it'll install packages such as jest so we can run the tests. Okay? So those are the big differences between the two. Very small, very minimal. And okay, so now that we have our Docker Compose test, uh, .yaml file, and also, quick note, Docker Hub also looks at all of your Compose files. Anything that ends in test.yaml, it will run. So you can have multiple files in here, multiple Compose files. Uh, as long as they end in test.yaml, they'll be picked up and run. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to go over uh, into the command line, and we've already merged those in, so all we need to do is push and Hub is already set up to find, to look for test.yaml. It's going to find it. What it's going to do is going to build the image based on our compose file. And then it's going to run this command inside of that image. It's going to run npm run test. And that is the same exact command that we just ran on the command line a couple minutes ago. So run test. Right? Okay. So let's go ahead and push this up to Hub and let's watch the build kickoff. So get push. Okay. Now let's go over to hub. Let's go look at our builds. Let's see what's going on. There we go. The built was picked up. And it's pending right now. Build logs haven't been uh, pushed yet. Let's give this a minute. Okay, looks like we're building. Okay, we're done building. Let's go down to the bottom of this build logs here. Let's take a look at our tests. And so you can see here that images being created with the SUT system under test. And then right here you can see test is uh, jest is being run. And here's the tests running and passing all test suites, uh, ran all test suites and passed. There we go. So now uh, Docker Compose ran, uh, succeeded and the image was tagged. All right. Now let's do a quick little review before we get into some of the more advanced topics. We started uh, off taking a look at access tokens. We created personal access tokens that you can use instead of your password. You're able to turn those off and on, make them active or inactive. Then we integrated with Slack. So anytime a build happens, we can push notifications into Slack so your remote team is aware of when builds pass or fail. Then we did some automated builds. We connected GitHub into Docker Hub. And anytime we push source code into GitHub, based on our rules that we set up in Hub that would kick off builds and build our images and tag them with the appropriate tag. Then we just finished up writing some automated tests. We created a YAML file that Docker looks at, ends in test.yaml, and then we'll run the command inside of that compose file and spin up an image and then run the tests inside of that image. Once those succeed, then that image is tagged and then pushed into the repo. 
Now we're going to kind of move on to some of the more really advanced uh, options that you have with auto builds and auto tests. Okay, let's jump over to the docs website and take a little uh, take a look at some of the advanced options that we can that we have. Okay, so down here, if you go to docs.docker.com and you come down to underneath Docker Hub, automated builds, then advanced automated builds. This is a great document that kind of lays out uh, everything you can do with uh, auto builds and some of the key environment variables, how you plug in and, and hook into the build process and uh, how you can build some scripts to uh, handle your custom builds. But basically Docker uh, Hub uh, gives you access to a bunch of environment variables in these hooks, right? And you can read down through here. I won't read all through them. We're going to give a, I'm going to jump over to a demo and show you some of these and how, how we use them. But then you can also override this pipeline. And so you can think of the pipeline in three phases. So you have a build, a test, and a push. And each one of those phases you can override. You can create your own build. So uh, instead of running the hub default build command, you can uh, add your own build command. And instead of running uh, the out of the box test command that Docker Hub will run, you can create your own. Um, and then also same with push, you can override all of those. And then there's also life cycles around each one of those three phases. There's a pre and a post. And so you can see those down here. Um, you have a post checkout, post build, post test, post push. So all of these things are how you kind of hook into the build process. And uh, there are all, all these files you put underneath a folder called hooks. And we're going we're gonna to I'm going to show you that here in one second. Um, and this allows you to tie in to the build process that Docker Hub does. OK, let's go create our hooks folder and put in our uh, overrides for the for the build pipeline. So I have that I have that code on a branch. So let me merge that branch in. Okay, there we go. So if you take a look inside of our code now, we now have a build folder, uh, a hooks folder with the build file in it, and we have these posts and pre files too. And if you remember, we were just looking at the docs, three main pieces of the pipeline the build, test, and push. So we're gonna override the build step right now. And you have access to these environment variables that Docker sets up for you, right? And we have a build argument in our Docker file, if we go and look there. So right here, you have a build argument uh, for setting up the port. And we wanna override that and we wanna pass in uh, a port from hub, okay. So let's go over to Hub real quick, and we're going to take a look at uh, the builds. And let's configure our build, and let's create an environment variable. And we'll call it port. And we want to use port 8181 instead of port 80. All right. So let's save that. So what that did is now we have a, we have a port that will get passed into the environment when our build gets run, right? And you can see here, we can access it in this bash file. And we run a simple Docker build, uh, passing in the build argument. We set up our Docker file. We tell it how to tag the image, and then we tell it what the context is, right? Okay, very straightforward. We're gonna save this file, and then uh, let's push this up and let's watch this build. So I'm gonna do a git uh, push. Okay, great. Let's go over to hub. Let's refresh our page here. And cool, we got a build happening. So we'll let that uh, start out pending and then it'll go into progress. Okay, the build is in progress now. Okay, there's success. Let's take a look at the build logs here. 
So you can see it starts off, and right here is when uh, Hub calls into our custom build. You can see it's pulling the images, it's going to build them, then it's going to build the test, starting the test images, and then down here we'll see the tests are run, tests are passed, all ran, ran all test suites. Okay, and then right here we see, all right, everything passed, and now we're going to push the latest image up. Okay, so let's go back to our console. Let's pull that latest image, and then let's run it. And let's see if our port was set, okay? So what I'm going to do is a Docker pull. I'm going to go Ronin. Actually, I'm just going to run it. So Docker run IT. I'm going to remove, whoop, remove. And I'm going to set the port to 8181 instead of 80 like we did in Hub. Let's go, let me just recap that real quick. So we go in the builds and then configure build. You can see right here our build environment variables set to 8181. So we set that there. Let's give it a name and we'll call it Docker Hello. And we want to run uh, Ronin uh, JS Docker Hello World. There it goes. We're going to pull the pull the image down, and we can see there that it's listening on port 8181. And Let's just test that out. So let's go localhost 8181. And there we go. Let's go stop our container. So I'm just going to control C here. And that'll stop the container from running. So if we do a Docker uh, PS, nothing's running. Docker A, it's been stopped all the way and removed. Let's go ahead and delete the image because we're going to make a couple more changes to latest and I want to be able to pull latest again. So I'm going to do docker remove image, um, Ronin JS hello world latest. And there we go. So let's see docker images. And you can see we don't have it anymore. Okay, now let's think of a scenario where we have different environments. Let's say we have a stage environment and we don't want to use the same port that we do in production. We run it on a different port. In stage so I have a little code snippet here let me grab that and I'm gonna write over top of this okay let me save that so what this is doing here is we're gonna uh, echo out the docker tag that comes in we're gonna use some uh, Linux commands we're gonna cut that command we're gonna we're gonna basically gonna parse it based on a dash right and then we're gonna take the first field so if our tag comes in and it's stage dash 1.0.1, what this command does is set this environment variable equal to stage. Okay. If it comes in as latest, environment variable will be latest. So then we're going to do an if conditional statement here. We look at the Docker tag. If it's latest, then go ahead and skip whatever we just did and go ahead and build it the same way we've been doing the whole time. Okay. If it's not, then we're going to grab this other environment variable that we're going to set in Hub, and we're going to grab this, the port uh, for the stage environment and set that for this image. Okay, so let's save that and let's go over to Hub. And we need we need to add another build environment. So let's do port stage, and let's set that to three thousand and one. Okay. So let's save that. All right, that's been stayed, saved. Now let's go back over to our terminal and we're gonna commit those changes. Okay, now let's push this up and let's watch it build. Okay, so we push the master, which will give it the tag of latest, right? Well, let's verify that. So we come in here to builds, let's click on builds. Okay, we're in a pending state. 
It's in progress. Okay, we have a successful build. Let's take a look at the logs here. So coming down, building image using port 8081. 8181. Uh, so let's verify that. So if we go back up in here into builds, let's take a look at the configuration. Let's take a look at our uh, environment variables. So 8181 should be port. Perfect. Okay, let's create an image for stage. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to add another build rule. I'm going to base it off a branch. And then we're going to capture A through Z and dashes and multiples of those. And we're going to grab the source ref. What source ref does is since I'm not doing any captures, it'll grab the whole tag, the whole um, branch. And I'm going to use the same Docker file, same build context, same everything. Let's go ahead and save that. OK, cool. So let's come back over here to the command line. And let's create a branch. So we want to go uh, check out B. And let's do stage dash. Oh, let's say it's 3.0.0. .0 .0. All right. Now let's push that up to GitHub. So get push. I'm going to do an upstream origin stage dash 3.0.0 go ahead and push that okay now let's come over into hub and let's see if that build is kicked off awesome looks like we got a build pending okay done cool let's take a look at it so there we go. Excellent. So building image using port 3001. Let's go take a look at our tags. And there we go. Stage-3.0.0. Awesome. One last feature I want to add into our custom build. And that has to do with developers and GitHub commit SHAs. So sometimes it's very hard for developers building images all the time. and not knowing exactly what image was built with your commit. So what we're going to do is after our build runs and completes and after we push it, we're going to hook into this post push, right? And we're going to tag the image that we just built with the commit. And then we're going to push that image into our repo. So let's grab this little snippet I have right here. And let's drop that into the file. And so you see, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to tag the image we just built with our repo and then with the source commit. And then we're going to push that. OK. So let me save this. Let's go over here. Let's go get checkout master. OK, let's commit. Okay, and then let's put the let's push this up into GitHub. All right, let's go see it build. Let's see the build here. Okay, building right now. It's in progress. Okay, there we go. Success. Let's make sure we got a successful build. Awesome. There we go. All right. So let's take a look at our tags. Yep. And there's the get tag right there. Perfect. Let's review real quick. Let's go look at the code. <clears throat> so the Docker build pipeline has three main phases. You have a build, test, and a push phase. And you can hook into each one of those phases. And you can replace the commands that Docker runs to either do the build, test, and push. And then you can also hook into pre and post, right? And so that's what we did here. Gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of options to build out your build process. Okay, got one last thing I want to do, and that's to add a webhook to our pipeline. So let me grab this URL, and we're going to go up to 
this website. It's a little test website that you can use that will that will receive your uh, posts for a webhook. All right, so we'll come over here to set it, uh, to webhooks. I'm going to create a new one. I'm just going to call it test. I'm going to put that little URL in there. I'm going to create it. Okay, so let's go back to our builds and let's kick off a build. I'm just going to manually kick one off. So that's pending. Okay, the build's in process. Okay, cool, it succeeded. Let's go take a look at our webhook. View history. And we can see here that uh, a webhook was sent. Okay, cool. There we go. We can see our webhook's been pushed. You can see all the info right here. See our Docker file, full description, that's the README. And you can see the namespace, Ronin.js, and a Docker Hello World. Excellent. Okay, let's recap what we talked about today. So we started out with access tokens. Those are personal access tokens that you can use instead of your password. Then we integrated with Slack so the rest of your team could get notifications on the build process. Then we automated some builds. We hooked into GitHub, and so when you push your source code into GitHub, it will kick off builds in Hub. Then we build out some testing into our process. So we built a, a, a Docker Compose test file, and when Docker sees that test.yaml file, it will kick off those uh, tests for you. And if they pass, then your image will be pushed. And then we went into some more advanced features in the auto build and the auto test. We talked about the pipeline and how you can plug into the pipeline and how you can modify it for your needs. And then finally, we talked about webhooks, how at the end you can hook into a webhook. So once the whole pipeline is finished, a webhook will be hit for you and you can tie in some other CI CD processes that you need to. Well, that was really great. I really enjoyed it. Um, we went really fast and covered a lot of material but uh, we have some really good questions coming in. So let's take a look at those now. I think Peter is ready to take questions. So please make sure your questions are in the questions panel and Peter will pick a few to cover right now. Yes, just looking through some of these here. Okay, we've got a bunch of questions around access tokens. So the access token is saved in your local machine or inside of Docker. It's only saved on your local machine if you save it. So that's why you have to copy it out of the hub UI and put it into a file and save it. But yes, it is also saved on the Docker side, but it's encrypted and stored um, safely. Uh, so no one else can read it on our side. Uh, does the password need to match your username or name of the token you created? So, um, so the password for the token, the access token matches your username. So, yeah, not the best. I used, I named the the token the same as my username, P McKee. Um, so that could, I could see how that could possibly be a little confusing. But let's say my my username was Fubar. Then you, when you log in using Docker, you would use Fubar and then pass in the access token. Um, another one real quick, if you were, uh, so if you're logged in and the access token is disabled, you do you will be denied right away anytime, and the next time you try and talk to Docker. Um, so you don't have to log in, log back out and log back in for that new um, access level to take effect. All right, let's see here. Okay, so one one real quick one about uh, image tags. I think this might have came in before I got to uh, setting up tags in the uh, build rules. But yeah, uh, the tags accept regex expressions. Um, and then you can also do captures in your reg regex expressions, like I said before, uh, up to nine of those. Um, then we got some good questions around uh, builds here. So. Yes, to be able to do anything custom building, 
you need to hook in, you need to create that build file in the hooks folder. And then you can you can do any kind of custom build you want to do. Um, so if you wanted to uh, build for different architectures, if you want to do a multi-stage build, so if you want to build, um, let's say a binary before you build your actual image, you can do that. Um, and also another, another good question here is, uh, can the build rules be defined in a file held in the Git repo? Not right now. You have to set up your build rules inside of Hub. Um, but that's an that's an interesting feature. I'm going to take a note of that and talk to the engineering team about them about that. Um, so also quickly, when uh, again went had to go really fast today um, because we have a little bit of a limited time. But yes, yeah, so if your your builds fail, you'll see them fail in the UI, and then you'll also get a Slack message. And if you set up emails, those type of things, you'll get you'll get notified that way. And then you can also see the build log uh, for the failures, just as you did as the uh, successes, and you can trouble through, troubleshoot through there. And um, let's see, let me read a couple more here. And Peter, while you're reading through, just to give everyone an update, the today's webinar has been recorded, and you guys will receive an email with the link. Uh, then the email will be whatever email you registered with this event with. So you'll get a uh, link to the recording within 24 hours of today's event. And um, also while Peter's looking, uh, we will have an event survey post event. So if you do have any recommendations or requests for future content, please be, be sure to fill out today's event survey after the event. Now, Peter, I'll give it back to you. Okay, great. We're getting a bunch of questions coming here in at the end. Um, let me try and grab some of the high-level ones. So most of the questions that are being asked need to be achieved through hooking into the pipeline, the build pipeline. And that's where you all those files that, files that you create underneath um, the hooks directory. But also, uh, I know we're at a limited time here, but feel free to uh, tweet at me any questions you have. I'd love to start connecting with you guys out there in the field. Uh, talk to your developers and understand what problems you're having, uh, how you're using Hub, um, what features you would like to see. Uh, so feel free to tweet at me. That's totally fine. Uh, again, that's at P McKee. Um, let's see, you can, yes, you can absolutely use uh, private repos on GitHub. Works the exact same way. You just need to use uh, the account that you connect in to GitHub. Uh, needs to have access to those repos. Um, Got a couple questions around Microsoft Teams. Right now, we don't connect in Microsoft Teams, um, but I am definitely gonna go talk to the product team and see where that is on the roadmap. Um, also too, some of, the, some of these questions, feel free to interact with our public roadmap and uh, enter some feature requests in there. Okay, so there's a bunch of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I will read through these. There's just too many to handle right now. Great questions, though. I, I really appreciate the, the interaction. Um, yeah, so look for more blog posts, um, more information coming out. Again, feel free to tweet at me. I can answer some of these a little bit offline. But um, yeah, I think that's that's about all for today.